World Card Game Federation here with another very local match. This one was taking place in my own doggone basement. This is going to be Kevin with his penchant for Frozen decks uh, taking on, would you believe, the preview version of Krillin or uh, basically archetyping the old style of uh, Black uh, Devious as it once was once upon a time. For those of you, a handful of you, who didn't get to know a whole heck of a bunch about the way the game used to be once upon a time, uh, you would have maybe never lived under the rule of Krellin, Ginyu, uh, not Goku, Krellin, Ginyu, and, gee, who were the big three in the first set? Why am I think I can't think of the third guy all of a sudden. Piccolo, what the heck? Yeah, that was really all that there was, despite having a gazillion MPs. So Kevin here is going to go ahead and go first. Uh, you guys remember, of course, Black Devious is very powerful. So powerful, in fact, as soon as Draku existed, it couldn't be allowed to, you know, exist thereafter. And I understand. He would have basically broken it as a matchup, which begs the question, why did Draku ever get released in that condition? Okay, Kevin's uh, going to go ahead and place his setup in play. I do not recall the name of the setup in uh, uh, play. That one helps with the milling effects. It's going to go over to Andrew. Andrew's going to go ahead and power up. That means it sounds like you didn't get anything to place into play, which is a little out of the ordinary when you start to think about the, the Kremlin builds. Because I'm sure you guys remember getting... Uh, Black powered up to death and smooth the stroll to death and all that stuff. So Andrew's not going to be confident enough to take this particular hand into combat, so he's going to pass with Jupiter blinding, really? A combat ender, that's something. I, I know he probably doesn't feel too much threat from the Black Devious Ginyu build, but still, you know, part of me says I probably wouldn't have dropped a combat ender in general. Okay, so it goes back over to Kevin. Kevin powers up. I... I would say, again, it's a little strange to see any Ginyu build not throwing allies and other cards into play at the these kind of turns. Witness a power not seen for thousands of years. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just having a moment in the background. So uh, I would uh, say that this particular fight, despite what you're looking at right now, ends up going on extra, extra long. I'm not sure if it's because of moments like the one you're looking at right here, where cards are being weighed out perhaps a little too long. Uh, I remember, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget having a, a local tournament where we didn't let have some uh, out-of-town folks uh, observe the rules of not taking, you know, not too long at a turn. Uh, basically, one of them was taking so long in every movement, every decision, every action that we basically should have disqualified him like six, ten times over. So, for some reason, Kevin wants to go into combat. I don't know what he's going to open up with. If I had to take a guess, we're playing Ginyu Forever and Ever, I'd open up with the energy attack. You always want to do that. Cause, uh, or, I suppose, if you want to try fi feeling out Andrew's defenses, yeah, okay. He's going to throw a Black Breaker, I believe that one's called. I, I actually don't remember. I know that was a rare from set 7. I remember it being pretty uh, perfunctory, so I don't remember actually using it all that much. Okay, so he... Okay, it's going to go ahead and hit, and I do not recall any of its effects. I remember it was highly situational. Oh, wow. Damage is banished from that one. That's up there with uh, Sinchoke for having that like out-of-pocket out of, out of you know, damage banish. That's nice. Okay, Andrew's going to get a chance to respond. He's going to open up with a lovable chestnut, a turn one, combat one, uh, confrontation, as per tradition. I see a physical block, I see an energy attack, and I'm not really sure what that way. I, I can't make it out. I think it's that one setup that goes off when as an instant when one of your other setups is, is destroyed, I believe. So I, I would hope... Uh, there we go. Kev's going to remember that that's uh, shuffled back in and I end up with a uh, discard situation that gets out of hand real quick. So that's neat, I suppose. Okay, so that was Andrew's action, was to go ahead and co uh, confrontation uh, the energy attack out of his hand. So that's interesting. So that means that Andrew is not terribly defensively postured at this point. Because remember, he wouldn't be worried about... Kevin's attacks if he had adequate blocks for them, because he's already seen the entirety of the hand. You get what I'm saying? He'd want to have a match for his blocks so he gets the most benefit out of them. So it must mean that uh, Andrew entered this one with... 
is so funny that he hears Cell music. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, if a person who never watched Dragon Ball heard Cell's theme, uh, the Bruce Falconer version, uh, yelled at us once, yelled about playing our house music so loud. So he should be good paying his power stages. Now, the thing about uh, Ginyu, Ginyu to me teaches you, especially that power, is resolve them in order. Please resolve them in order. Heaven knows why some people don't. So you pay your power stages, you finish your search, you get your ally, you place them into play, you power them up, and then you deal with hit effects. Doing it in any other order, well, one, it's poor form, but also because it can alter what you do. I hate to say it way back when, uh, when I was an unscrupulous son of a gun, I I would take advantage of people who did that, who like did things out of order, and it might change what I was doing. Like I noticed my... Uh, Opponent sees more concerned about one ally over the other as I put them out, and it's just, it's not good for anybody. Resolve in order. Okay, he's going to use Black Manipulative's ability to reveal an attack. So, one thing I, I got to admit, I wish had gotten perhaps a bit more time and explanation was about how all immediate effects are handled. Oh, it's going to go ahead and banish uh, this item in his discard pile. Uh, Jace is on the field, which is good. Uh, it, it felt a little lonely out there, being the whole team deck. So he used all the effects of shoulder charge. He placed cards on top of the decks. Oh, wow. He is throwing a, wow, a unstoppable, unpreventable. And I think with the buff on this Kremlin level, I think, because I can't remember if the mastery buffs attacks. It's, it's not one I use nearly enough to remember it off the top. But if it does buff it up, it does make it an auto crit, which is kind of wild. I recall Black Conflict being used in the same manner, you know, just to make sure you deliver auto crits. I'll have to ask Andrew why he didn't go with that. So uh, Jace's crit off the auto crit damage off that one, you know, kind of obvious if you're paying attention. Okay, and that was uh, Andrew's action, and... Wig out. Oh, don't mind me, I'm having another moment off camera. Uh, so, I want to say the instant, and he's going to go ahead and throw uh, his energy attack, he gained some stages off Crown's level 2. Again, I, I'm not familiar enough with the preview version to tell you exactly all the shenanigans it does, all I know is it's a lot. It looks like choke this last card out of my hands before I can do anything. Yeah, you know what? I guess I hadn't thought about Black Devious being in play for so long that you want to pitch a dead card to do that. I'm going to discard knee catch. Ooh, I wouldn't do that. I'd always keep a block over a useless uh, event if, if I was doing that one. Oh, yeah, and Jace got banished, so that's interesting. In black, I don't think there's anything that can get him back from the banish zone unless it very specifically targets any cards in the banish zone. Okay, that ends, and uh, that was a not very fruitful combat. Uh, Kevin's going to come up minus an ally. Andrew is correctly postured. Remember I told you about that, how strange it was to not see a Krellin deck just pitch a bunch of stuff into play? He's going to pass and rejuvenate Black Swirl. Uh, so that's interesting. I would probably keep that out unless the other card in Andrew's hand is another confrontation. Uh, you will never, ever fight Andrew without him getting all three confrontations out. It will happen regardless. His minimum usage of confrontation is three in a game. Okay, so Kevin's turn begins. He gets uh, all three of his power ups. I know he has a setup in play. I don't do not recall its uh, usage. Like I said, it was a black style setup from set seven, so they're fairly useless in my opinion. I think. That yeah. might have seen more stuff in uh, a true set eight, nine, and so on, yeah, but I just it just didn't. Literally, have been the first sleeves I ever bought. That's pretty wild for Pansy. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh yeah, that's what I'm doing over there. That's what was is taking all my time. I'm re-sleeving a deck over there. I don't know if you guys have that same issue where you have a deck that gets uh, worn out deck sleeves that are so old, all the edges split and all they're good for is holding holographic cards in the in the book. <laughs> and sometimes not even that. So yeah, I finally got around to re-sleeving one of those ones in especially bad condition. Okay, uh, looks like for some reason Kevin wants to go into combat. I would love to see the hand that made him want to do that. There's like pens and pencils and stuff. You see a small pair of gray scissors? Gray handles 
Don't mind me. I probably shouldn't be interrupting their match. I just wanted them to hand me some scissors so I could finish cutting out some cards that got printed recently for preview purposes. Uh, so Kev's over here has got, of course, for opening moves are Ginyu's a power, and then of course the setup and play. And if I, oh, oh, our favorite person, or a different Troy. Oh, a different Troy. <laughs> Troy Davis would say that, but not with love. That's <laughs> one So I'm not sure what's going on here. We're waiting for Kevin to throw a first action. He's sort of just hanging out. <laughs> yeah, a buddy of mine uh, who used to play this game with us all the time, he said if he had watched that game I was telling you about where we had people come in from out of town to play and they were slow playing it so bad that a regular match, like like regular turns, like regular actions in combat were taking three to five minutes for a person to just sit there and puzzle out. And that realistically, we should have been calling time, kicking them, and getting them out of there. So we are always wor uh, not worried, but I think about that more often. He's throwing a physical. Looks like another set seven black style physical. He's banishing cards from his own discard pile. Don't know what that's about. Okay, so he banishes his discard pile. Oh wow, he took a confrontation out of this one. I'm in Charlie. Same. So one, okay. Uh, six total. So six power sages and probably at least one life. Energy card for, or energy attack from your hand. So it costs two. Wow. And so this concept oh, of playing actions like, as defenses, which okay, is okay, not okay. at all in of itself a problem, I just don't usually. I cannot wrap my hand or hand my head around the idea of using, like, for instance, the ally search okay. as a defensive thing. Because I would say balancing-wise, it was never really meant to do that. Like, why would I ever use, you know, get that sort of benefit timing-wise, effort-wise, and not be an action, but actually a defensive reaction. That's, I, I don't think it was fully, I think it was one of those, wouldn't it be cool if kind of ideas. I, I don't think it was, it's not my favorite innovation the game's ever had. But then again, you have to remember something. Black style has literally never been my thing going back to 1999. So it's not really all that infeasible that I wouldn't be for it. So now we get to see an actual response. I know that looked like it was an action, but no, no. We're waiting to see. There we go. He's going to use a... Nice. Physical or energy? Physical. Knee catch. I'm at two anger. Wow, so he's got two anger over there. Nice from a well placed knee catch. That's uh, that's good timing. I don't think it's going to matter out of a whole bunch because I don't recall this deck having a whole bunch of physicals, but neat. Use some big dice. Any way possible. So let's see what Kevin's action is. He still has his guinea power in play, the setups in play. I think I'm seeing two cards there, the upper left. It might be three. No, no, no. It's just the one. Just the one. Because he already threw a knee catch and then that physical uh, from set seven. I'm sorry. You started that one. Actually, a long time ago. And then Breaker. Just to kind of keep... Just to kind of try to keep this pain train rolling. Get up, get up. So uh, I think it, uh, Kevin might have forgot about Andrew's defenses uh, that he's always got a free block with 18 out there. So three life. And there's literally no reason. Yeah, I was gonna say there's literally no reason for him not to have 18 use that. Blinding. I'm just thinking. I am blind dead. That is interesting. He, he did end up getting a blinding energy move in his hand, so it wasn't a confrontation like I thought it was, so he ended up... So he's going to go ahead and banish the top two cards of his life deck to go ahead and pay for the cost of blinding energy move. It's preventable, yeah. Okay. It should be three life or four life with the buffs on this level. Wow, we got a dead recoup down there. Okay, that combat's going to go ahead and end, and I do believe this is one where Kevin had un, uh, unexpectedly pressured him into it. I don't mind. You, you entered, and I, I made combat end with blinding. Oh. And then it's, uh, Kevin should still be down to one card. Tessa came back positive. You're going to be a daddy. Will I claim this Negro? 
Will I? We call it. Will I ever speak to this girl again? Find out in the next episode. Oh, don't mind me. I'm having another moment off camera. Dog on. So uh, there you go. He's gonna pass rejuvenate a sphere. That's nuts. I tell you, the rejuves that Andrew's been throwing under that deck this whole game has left me guessing as to what he's holding because he's seemingly putting away more valuable cards. So I don't know what he's up to exactly. So it goes back over to Kevin, uh, and then he's gonna finish powering up, getting you to full. So funny story. You never actually want to be at full power with Ginyu, unless you're like level 3 or 4, it's just counterproductive. So, Kev should be hurling that uh, energy attack every turn trying to get down to 0, but that's just me. So, I fought this guy a million years ago. And, like we said, in the time of sets 1 through 3, so we're talking about the dawn of time here, we're talking about prehistory. And I remember he was so obsessed with this idea. Like, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know why people attach egos to a game. Like, why? It's just a game. But he was playing Black Style Krillin, of course. Black Devious Krillin. You know, it was the first couple of years of the game. So, you know, first year of the game. And uh, he was so, like, deeply offended at being called a net decker. Like, I don't think there was just one good deck with Krillin at that point. So, no, I didn't believe that, you know, the, the meta is the only way to do it. He was so hurt, I was like, it's just a net deck. It's just like every other black Krillin deck you ever fought. So, Kevin's going to go ahead and enter combat. You can start with a black invitation and get Sphere. So, that explains it. Andrew had another heroic energy sphere in his hand, and that's what happened with that. Um... Ah, there it is. So that's two or three. If you guys are running your stats or you're looking at the end of the how much time there's left in this video, we're going to see confrontation number three plus by the end of this. We're just going to keep a running tally. We got two out of three. One is banished, so theoretically we should be running out of them, but we shall see. So it looks like a card got shuffled back into Kevin's deck. My apologies. I did not get to see what it was. I would take a wild guess. It was probably just a random energy attack or something similar. So I must have like been really into whatever it was I was doing over there because I don't have a lot of memories of this fight going on this long or having this much going on. Okay, he's finally going to use Ginyu's power, which is fine. Also, I got to start doing glare tests for cards. I, I didn't really expect to have this heavy a glare during this. Okay, so he gets Birder out, which is nice. So I would imagine he's going to have 18 take it. Because that's. It was literally second card from the bottom. So ah. That's have, why I'm not shuffling. I'll have 18 stop it. Okay, 18 has been used. Okay. Energy web. Ooh, energy attack. And I want to say that would mean that Kevin probably doesn't have an energy attack in his hand, so it's uh, probably, what, 7 plus life card damage? I, I don't exactly know what it was. Yeah, so. Two. It's going to be. Four. Five, six, eight. Wow, that was eight life cards. Good nest, good night. Even with all that endurance, mm -hmm. Birder goes down in the next action. So that's why in my memory I never remember seeing any allies out there like at all. Mastery. Okay, he's going to pitch an attack for the mastery. I, I don't get that. Okay, yeah, he makes him ditch a card, which is neat. Action. I'll pass. Wow, Andrew's passing. So this was not really the match I, I expected to find when I went back and so went to the tapes. Or mill one twice. Okay. Oh, it looks like confinement was a card that would force him to destroy the top cards of his life deck. One of those has an effect, I saw, but I think... I discarded a card from my hand. I didn't gain stages. I didn't raise anger. So only one. Only one. Right. Okay, so it only does the one that mill. Is. It looks like it was Spanish after use. Now, I don't remember that card. It's funny. I, it really should have ended up in one or, one or more of my Wheelo builds from way back when. Must be some reason I didn't uh, use it. Pass as well. All right, combat ends fairly uneventful. Nobody took any giant, you know, knockout hits, except for Kevin took a little bit more than average damage on that attack. So Andrew's powering up his Krillin. Is eighteen. He's got a decent board out there. Let's enter. 
Okay, Andrew is going in on this one. Interesting. He seldom goes in aggressive unless he's got... Yeah, there it is. I was going to say one or more Destructo Discs. Energy for a disc. Energy for five. And it does what, what it does. No endurance. Unstoppable. Just because you call him a stop, Two, he stop. No prevention. Three. What? <laughs> you took no precautions? You know how it is. Create your anger. Yeah, the lameness, the lameness of the Destructo disc. At least it was not black up, upper dodge into Destructo disc like it was the olden days. Okay, uh, Kevin should be resolving that damage. He gets critted. He should have one anger left. He does. He still has Giddy's level one power. Presumably he has cards in his hand that should be useful during combat. As you can see, the labor shortage has even made its way to the Guinea Force. Everybody here was so dedicated. Ginyu. Okay, he's going to use his Ginyu power. Well, yeah, he's going to go ahead and resolve that search. I, I would presume he has all the Ginyu force, but uh, realistically, Birder's dead. Jace is banished. Firing before they're even hired. Okay, I, th I thought you were just saying that Ginyu murdered them prior to the selection. No, Cro Crowen's murdering them. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Raccoon, I believe, was in the discard this pile. I'm not sure if he made it. Oh, nice. You, you mean you, so, you don't feel like you had a choice in the matter? Like, so, as you know, On the Move was made to basically combat excessive use of opponent's uh, no, uh, pa uh, personality powers. So there is no card to target for the return. It's just a regular stop at this point. And then uh, he causes... What's that card called? Black? Stages. What's the card that puts the thing back in your hand and just doesn't go anywhere? Delay. Black delay. I always think what? it's black delay, it's not black delay. Okay. Mm. Action. As far as yours. Disc for five. No prevention. There it is. That explains why Andrew went into this combat at all. Yeah, since he's going to go ahead and take full damage on that one, he's was just getting ready to crit his ally anyway. Not that he shouldn't. Eesh. Three. I've been counting. I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave Galdo. He can stay out there. No. <laughs> just toss the freaking dice behind me. Just yeah, I guess that's gone. Okay, that attack uh, found its mark. We <laughs> kind of took that blast to the face. Andrew does a small amount of mercy, preferring not to kill off uh, uh, have, Goldo at this point. I literally have nothing for you. You pass. I have to pass. Well, He's not. Mary, ditch something for the mastery. What are you doing? Okay, wall well, attack. <laughs> I lost myself. Mm -hmm. Must stop card of his life deck end of each turn. I too wonder what's going on here. I'm lost. <laughs> Something's going on. I just don't know what it is. So, waiting to see what's going on. The uh, rebuke, I think it is. Got attached. Basically, it's just the one that makes him makes you banish once per turn. So it's a neat card and everything. Really yeah, punishes you for stalling out. Last card, uh, your hand. Oh, good. Discard that. Oh, good. He he, he did not need that card. It was not but dead weight. So he's gonna make it use the uh, devious for that one. So pretty good. Okay, it looks like poor uh, Kev had a handful of dead cards. Oh, you're right. Cause I had yes, he did. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. He drew into two Destructo Discs. There's no way that was not Andrew's turn. Okay, so I'm not sure if Kev drew anything at all that was made for setup stuff. Oh, you're going to start going for that one? Where we call it like it's a soccer game? Or that one? It's yeah, it's a little bit of an old custom. I, I remember watching one of the world championships or whatever game it was. I guess it would have been that first year. I don't know if it was a world championship. It might have been a regional. And I just remember it being over in the most classic uh, uh, methods possible. It was We kept saying upward dodge into a destructo disc was sort of like describing basketball. A layup, 
Oh, it's good! You know, that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm not sure whose action we're waiting on here. I, I don't know if Kev's still waiting on his first action in his own turn, or... Okay, so it looks like Kev's actually bringing us into combat. Heaven knows why I thought we were already in combat. So he has Ginyu power. There you go. To get him closer a little bit. No, no, he must be throwing in a different attack. Crush, crush the foil. I don't care. Crush it. Alright. Uh, uh, um, interceptor barrage. Five and five. Kay. 18 stops it. Nice. You just kind of have to think about it. You're gonna uh, not killing a 18 means you're just gonna have to waste one attack per turn, and black power up ends the combat, and that is that. I don't know what Kev had in his hand. Let's see what he ends up dumping off, just to see how devastating this was. He had black duck, and then that looks like that was pretty much it. Uh, looks like the attach card goes off. He ends up having to banish the one. Uh, looks like he, of course, drew into another power-up. I can't say it enough. I've never fought the Krillin where he didn't have one, two, or three black power-ups and play at any one time. Uh, so that turn ends. He ends up having to banish another life card for the attached card remaining in play. Uh, let's see. Did Kevin draw anything he could actually use here during his turn, during the planning step, just to throw some stuff down? Pitched it. That's it. I just nope. Just said screw it. I ain't winning this one. I'll just pitch the hand. For some reason, Kevin opted to uh, discard down to zero, which is probably something I've only ever seen once in all my years of playing this game. Uh, I recall it was uh, preset four. Okay, you're gonna open up with the black energy web, of course, because that's hilarious to open up with early game. Uh, looks like Kev drew Bunk in his hand uh, for this one and can't stop it. Jeez. Eight life energy web. You have regular endurance, but it shuts off uh, Ginyu's energy. So trying to get down to zero is going to be a real struggle. Six. Wow, he ran into some pretty significant... Wow, uh, endurance, that's pretty good. That's fine. So near as I could tell... Mastery. Mastery. Okay, he's going to do the wise thing, activate the mastery, handle the discard. Sorry, I was just hearing Moltar. That's pretty good. Black uh, uh, Swirl went away. That's nice. Searching tech. I'll banish two from your deck. Okay, good old searching technique. Now, someone would have to remind me a little bit about this, because I remember once upon a time there was key cards, one used to have to gut out of the deck, and we're talking like score days we're talking about here. Uh, I, I never, never thought that being able to basically search for any two cards was ever a good idea. And I think you guys probably noticed just how little life deck actually just hit the table right there. It looks like there's as little as three life cards in that deck. So let's see if Andrew has uh, one more attack. I don't know if he's going to use Krellin's powers to try to kill him. Oh, uh, it might be four life cards. It's hard to tell. I want to say it's down to three. Probably won't do a thing, but... Dismissal. Five He's going to throw it. 18 stops it. Power there you go. Remember, you have to throw away and power up ends. And Apparently, Andrew doesn't want to take any chances. The combat's going to go ahead and end. And then, there you go. It's going to be Andrew's turn. Andrew's going to go ahead and go into combat. And then... You drew me into that combat. Oh, okay. That's right. So Andrew initiated and the game she is over. Kevin draws out. Uh, this wasn't really much of a test for the Krillin deck. You'll see that coming up soon.